my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And what do we do? Well, we provide mentoring and training services for, for different mechanical engineering codes. And we provide equipment certification and re-rating services as well. We'd be pleased to help you. So let's continue with our slides. Welcome back. We are going to be looking at episode two, which is a continuation of the uh, sample problem guide. And uh, this is, we're going to talk about more about a level one assessment. And we're going to talk about specifically about 3.2 and we're going to give some commentary about that. So let's begin our study. Example 3.2, we have a pressure vessel. And we're going to perform a level one MAT, which means the minimum allowable temperature for shell, shell section on a pressure vessel. Now, if you remember, we had done some videos before on uh, minimum Zion metal temperatures. And um, we, if we do it on a shell, it's very simple to determine the government, governing thickness. So let's, let's continue to go through this example. So we have a horizontal vessel as shown, we are, it's constructed to ASME Boiler Pressure Vessel Code Section 8 Division 1. It's a half of an inch thick and it's constructed of uh, SA53 grade B seamless pipe and there's no toughness data available. A couple of options for evaluation for a level one assessment. And uh, as you recall from rules earlier, that if we're on a shell and we just have like, you know, internal pressure, that kind of thing, then we can do a very simple analysis. So it looks like we're on the right track here. So option A, governing thickness and exemption curves. That's the, the, uh, the option A that is available to use. Other one is to use, you know, available impact test results to, to uh, do our evaluation. Okay, so the whole point of this is our CET, our critical exposure temperature, must be greater at the end of the day than our MAT, which is our minimum allowable temperature uh, temperature for our material. And um, there was a whole bunch of videos that we did a while back on under the playlist minimum design uh, MDMT and there's extensive discussions on CET and MAT and all the different terminology but but uh, fitness for services uses these terminologies so a couple more things to bring into mind is is that if you know where operating conditions change then we have to do a reassessment okay uh, and if there's, you know, there ha this is also on a condition that there's regular inspection and maintenance required. And the, 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 uh, they're recommending API 510 and B23 are an equivalent. Step one basically says, make a decision on what options you're going to, which option you're going to follow. And you have two choices. You can use the governing thickness and exemption curves, or you can get some impact in uh, testing information and qualify it that way. But in this particular example, we do not have the impact testing available. So we will follow option A in this example. Step 1.2, we're going to determine the uncorroded governing thickness. And this is, you know, mirrors what how they do it in Section 8, Division 1. And basically, uh, we've determined um, from the different charts and tables that um, what the governing thickness is, and it's the same as the shell, so it's a one-to-one. -one. But it gets more complicated with different shapes. Uh, in our, so we're, we got half of an inch. Next thing we're talking about form heads, use the minimum thickness may be used, it's not applicable. And pipe components, you know, subtract the milk tolerance for piping and that's also not applicable. 
step 1.3, determine the material toughness. So in this case, we're going to use uh, material specification curve B, and that's found on table 3.2. I believe it's the same in the 2007-2016 uh, edition tables. And basically from there, we determine we're going to use uh, figure 3.4 curve because we call that different classes of materials have different different toughness values. So that's how a, uh, API differentiates between the, you, they just point you to different curves so you can get the, the more precise uh, data. And, you know, if there's no curve available, then there's say use curve A. And, and of course, uh, this is not applicable to us. Our figure 3.4, we have our thickness which is the governing thickness for a shell, which is half of an inch. We go all the way up to curve number B, and then we go across and we get our MAT of minus seven degrees Fahrenheit. Now there's tables available in metric. They just call it figure 3.4M. And there's also uh, a table so that you can put this into your spreadsheet and calculate this. Okay, so let's look at our conclusions here. So based on a curve B that we we selected from the materials tables, uh, based upon the material that we were given, uh, we, we got figure from figure 3.4 and 3.4 for metric, we determined our MAT of minus seven degrees, which is equivalent to minus 21 centigrade. And this was established for the shell section based on the governing thickness. And, um, and there's been no allowance taken into account for post-weld heat treat. In this case, this example, there was no uh, post-weld heat treating done. And that uh, concludes this example. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. 